Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so I promised yesterday to do analysis on um, I bought the, the logs. So this is what the logs show. Um, this is from the USD market. I could tell because it's the base quote is USD. This is Binance. So um, I have here, now if you're interested in this, there's two, two options. Start now, go to the quantlabs.net slash book, sign up, get some free scanning screener technology here. Um, I'm also going to be talking about my elite program. There's six courses. If you're interested in that, just go to quantlabs.net slash elite. So in here, if you ever become a member, I have here uh, six, six courses, I believe. This one I'm talking about is exactly using this technique that I use. It's part of my debugging. This really helps out. So here, uh, this is evolution of zero to hero. Uh, it's using Python to generate these. So what we're looking at is the latest from last night. So today would be the 18th. So knowing that, um, at the end here, you can see the 18th was the last position. That would have been this morning. And I have a weird bug where it's closing out the positions pretty well almost instantly. So I'm just showing an example of how these stupid bugs can really affect your um, your debugging and whatnot. So I'm just going to look for an example here. So all of these are just representation of what comes back from technical analysis. So I can further diagnose what is working, what is not working in terms of patterns. I can turn them on and off uh, in my debugging, my logging, so it's really helpful. But what I'm looking for, let me just see if I can find a, a buy. So here's an example of a buy. Let me just see if I can find a, a more recent one. Okay, so here's a buy right here on the 18th. Here's the price, 0 0.0456. Now, if you note the time here, 11.18, 9.15, uh, part of my training rules is I only want one position open for one pair at a time, just for debugging purposes. So if you notice here, there's the buy right here that just showed you, but really pay attention to the time, 9.15.03. So there's two things, actually, I should just copy this string here. And uh, what you'll find here is that the bug is we have a, a buy, but within seconds right here, it sells it off. And I've been like racking my brain for three days trying to figure it out. So as simple as it is, here's the buy, here's the sell. So um, it's really not going anywhere because... That's the price of when I bought it. Here's the sell. It's the same. Now, if you factored in the commission fees on Binance, you would have a losing position. And the other thing is that it's only two seconds on. So within two seconds, what happens is the price moves so fast where here's the closing price at 0456. So as part of my exit, I measure using either Fibonacci uh, or ATR with a magnitude that I've set that I've talked about a few weeks ago. Um, there, there's a set of conditions to close out the position. So what we're talking about here is that the low here is the low, the lower bound ATR, and this is the upper bound ATR to exit if the price at any time hits those targets. On top of that, I've added two more conditions to um, close out a position if using Fibonacci as well. But if you notice here, this stupid bug uh, that I should have known about, here's the price, 0456. It, it is lower, uh, it is uh, outside of this range of the level 
four and five. So as a result, um, what happens is specifically here, uh, I believe it's the reason it will close out is because this price technically is higher than this one. Uh, so it will close out the position within two seconds. So this right here is a real problem uh, for the um, for this bot. So knowing that, knowing I could debug it, and print it out as it runs, that tells me what, where the problem lies, and I know exactly what was the exit condition to cause that. For days on end, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out why is it closing so soon. Now I know, because of the debugging, and that's why I created this course in my elite called Evolution of Zero to Hero Trading Strategy. If you sign up, just click on this one right here, Evolution Zero to Hero Trading Strategy, that will get you all started for that. So knowing that, um, it becomes a problem. So that's all fine and good. So now what I'm looking to analyze, um, if I look at the current market, it's very, it's, it's, it's a huge downward uh, pressure. If I load up my, my uh, scripts here and just uh, run one of these, in Binance Live. So I will choose uh, Python 3 schedule US test. So I'll let that run for a little while. But for almost, I'll say five days, the markets have had so much downward pressure that the prices of crypto is either flatlining or uh, kind of going down. It's been like that for the last five days, maybe a week actually. But as I put up a message last night on my Facebook and YouTube that what I noticed over the last three days with the same trading logic of the Binance <clears throat> versus Binance US, there's more activity in the Binance US on top of with the Binance US, there was uh, actually, uh, just, let me just get rid of this here. Part, part, part of it with, with uh, when there's downward pressure, there are some coins that will do well. Well, I should say well, but they move. Ah, I'm going to load up my uh, Redis. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. But um, what I could show you is coin market cap, 24-hour moves. So what you'll be looking at here on coin market cap, and just see how much downward pressure there's been just alone in the 24 hours. And there's very few... Um, Crypto coins that are moving in a positive direction. I mean, you can just see that it's just all red on the 24 hour move. That's what it's been like for the last four or five, six days. But there are some coins that are doing okay. The ones that I'm noticing are doing okay are this one, Tezos. Um, the, what's the other one? Uh, Tezos and Adam which is Tezos, that one, and Cosmos. This one's been doing okay as well. Um, these ones that are Tether, I don't like trading those because those are heavily traded and, and, and uh, linked to the US dollar. So there's not much room of profit you'll get with those coins. So as a result, I tell my bot not to trade those. But other than that, there's only two coins out of a lot that are, that are doing... Okay, like Chainlink can be doing okay as well, but it's it's severely down the last 24 hours as well. So there's some profit opportunity there, but majority, I'd say 90% of the coins are just doing not good. They're, they're, they're downward pressure. So because of that, uh, where's my... So last night, there was a lot of activity where there was Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin being purchased. So I, I want to see those opportunities. So you can see here another one that's been active. And when my other bot was working really well early last week was Cardano. It, it traded Cardano really well. So there's a lot of Cardano here in US dollar being traded, even though it's downward pressure. There, as I said, there are opportunities here 
little blips of them. But you can see just over the last day, on today, 11-18, November 18, it's just been Cardano. But let me just see what we have here. And these are the entries. So what I'm looking for now are the ones outside of Cardano, which was the day before on the 17th of November. Let's see what we can find here. So if this was trading right now, the only ones that would be trading, if any, is Cardano. This bot, as I've hinted at before, with uh, the downward pressure, um, what you can do on the entry is minimize the trading or, or minimize the trading risk to test if the trade is worth trading. So what I'm noticing on the entries, if the uh, coin is very volatile, meaning there's high probability of negative moving whipsaws on an open position, I don't take the trade. So that's what this system, this new version looks for. And it's, it's choosing fewer coins to trade, but the ones that it does trade, or at least for the entries, are much more profitable. So, for instance, it'll take out Monero. It will take out Chainlink because those are volatile. They move quickly. So you can see here we have uh, our first one outside of Cardano. This was earlier today. It was Litecoin. So let's see what else we have. So... I'm looking for the coins, and again, that is, I'm, I'm I'm noticing which ones are tradable in a very negative market in crypto. Which ones are tradable based upon what I just said? So Cardano is one of them by a long shot. So we have Ethereum now. We have um, so we have Ethereum. I did see Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. So these are good signs, but the question is when when I fix and when I re-implement this bot with the new fixes, uh, will it close out the position as I want? I'm just showing you one of the debugging processes I go through to to fix to fix bugs. So you can see here, I'm able to uh, calculate my average momentum. And my average ROCP, which is the rate of change percent. So what you can see here, as each entry, this will measure over a certain amount of minutes to ensure that, on average, the momentum and the rate of change percent are positive. We don't want to take um, entries where, obviously, the momentum or the ROCP is negative. Because then that means there's, a, it's, it, there's negative whipsaws in there. So as a form of insurance, you don't want to take that entry. So that's what we, what we do here. Every single um, entry here, you'll see that the buy has a positive average momentum and a positive average ROCP. If you see here, it's positive, positive. <clears throat> And uh, that is one way to, to, to ensure that your uh, positions will have a much higher probability of being uh, profit profitable. So there's a lot of Cardano right now. There was an Ethereum. There's another Ethereum right here. Mostly Cardano. There was a Litecoin as well. So as the evolution of this bot happens... Um, you modify it to know that you have a higher, higher probability of profit. That's how I tweaked my last bot early last week for the Binance crypto market. And again, this is a totally different market. So you're going to have different nuances within the Binance US market as well. And I can say the same thing with other markets out there, be it... Uh, Futures that I'm looking at, like on the CME. So these sort of things help you out. And I'm sure there's going to be a question of how frequent is this. This is very uh, every minute, every two minutes. So it's polling every minute, two minutes. So that's why there's more opportunity here. But we want to ensure that when it does take a position, A, it's going to be profitable. And on the exit side, it will be because the timing's important to make sure it's profitable.
and consistent. But right now, if I see anything that's a driver, it will be um, the um, Cardano. But you can see here, right here, in this position, 1117, uh, the average momentum was negative. So if I go looking for the buy here, I know that position is going to be unprofitable. So what I could do is I could look for the next, the previous corresponding buy. We'll just see. Um, I'm just looking for the 17th. So we have here 11.17 at 3 in the morning. No, I think it was much farther down. But you can see the process I can go through to looking for exactly what's going on in the markets. So right here, as, 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 as an instance, here's our buy November 17th on Ethereum and U.S. dollar. So we have we measured the ATR. That's for the um, for the exit potential. You see right here we have our momentum being volatile. So there is another in, in TA lib, a normalized um, a normalized ATR as well. So I would probably recommend using that because you can see it's a lot more e easy to use. Variance I find is useless, but um, here on our Ethereum, I should be measuring the momentum, but I'm not, but I could. Oh, here's a momentum. That's a momentum. So I could take this every minute. So let's say over the last five minutes, each instance right here. We have here, out of, let's say, six minutes, half are negative. So for that entry, I wouldn't take that entry because half of the entries are negative. So as a result, or the prior six minutes, the momentum is negative, which means it's very volatile, as opposed to, let's say, Neo here, this next one, if I can look for the momentum. Uh, momentum, momentum, or you could use ROCP as another form as well. See the ROCP seems to be pretty positive. So one, two, three, four, five, six minutes. It's either zero, but it's positive. So chances are that will be um, a, po a, po a possible profitable uh, trade. Now, here's the problem is if you get over those six minutes a profitable run up because <laughs> the timing may be off, you may take the entry on the tail end of that little six minute spike. And as a result, it may go negative. But what you could do to really ensure that you have more positive momentum, in our case, let's say use ROCP, you can see here, out of a lot, there's very few negative moves. Same with um, the momentum as well. So as a result, you know there's a higher probability of those next bunch of minutes that you're going to take on once the entry is put on that they should stay positive. Okay? So this is really important to understand that. So I'm going to go back to... But, but my, my whole point, though, is because of this technique and, and this course that I built, this evolution of zero to hero, this has helped me so critically made it much easier for me to build high probability winning bots because of this technique. And uh, again, that's part of my course or one of the courses. So let me go back to my 
Um, let's see here. I'm going to put uh, the 18th. Okay, so we're here. So I think this is our first uh, position taken at nine minutes after midnight. So these should be prior to midnight on, yep, they are. Hold on, or are they? What we'll do is do this. So what I'm looking for is the day stamps, time stamps of, uh, let's see here. Where is my timestamp? Okay, so we're about 3 a.m., 4 a.m. on the 17th. I'm just looking for my positions here. Okay, so what I'm looking for is to see what was tradable uh, last night, or sorry, on the eve of uh, the 17th, on the 17th. So I see we have Litecoin and Ethereum. Through this technique, I can see it's quite volatile right here, just by looking at the number of negative momentum. Same with uh, the ATR. Well, the ATR looks okay, but what you need to really look for is the ROCP and the, and the but there's quite a bit of negative. Those positions should not be taken because it will measure over the last uh, six minutes, five or six minutes on the average. See, here's a normalized ATR. They're all positive, but we want momentum at ROCP. So here we have the ROCP, shows it will be positive. Momentum, same. So these probably were all positive, so this pretty looks pretty valid. Oh, let me just test some stuff here. So we got Ethereum, Litecoin. Uh, what else do we have in here? So, so it was it was uh, very active last night with the Ethereum and Litecoin. Uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. So that's all I'm seeing. And again, that's only measuring if the prior five, six minutes are positive on the momentum and uh, ROCP side. Okay, that's all I'm seeing. No more Cardano. Well, there's a Cardano there. Uh, 88, there's more Cardano. So for a little while, Cardano, or sorry, um, Ethereum and Litecoin were active, and now it's back to all I'm seeing are Cardano entries. So that tells me the market started to move up a little bit because it's it's no longer taking on the Cardano, but uh, it was opening up where Litecoin and Ethereum positions were being taken, which is quite unique because this is a, a pattern, and these patterns can change in at any time. They don't they can break down in a few days. But what I'm seeing as a pattern is when the markets are down in the US, in Binance US, there's opportunities of Cardano. But when it opens up a little bit, um, you can start to see more uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, the bigger coins that are trading in the world of uh, Binance US. So we're now here at 11.16. So let me go further down. As I said, I saw Bitcash, Bitcash USD. Um, so that was happening at 10.15. Just looking for patterns here via these logs. Quite interesting. 
So all I'm seeing that's been trading is Litecoin, Ethereum, not so much Cardano when it opens up. Uh, this is quite interesting. Okay, so there's all the Cardano. Then we start to see Litecoin right here. And then so there was an Ethereum in there as well somewhere right here. And then over time, we started seeing some Bitcoin Cash positions start up as well. Ethereum. And again, once you start looking at this data and these logs, you'll start to see patterns like I'm seeing right now live in front of you. And I'm doing this on purpose so you can see the, the, uh, the advantages that this brings. And at the same time, I have the ability to watch what the moves were on a, on a rate of change percent level or a momentum level. So you can see here another uh, Ethereum. So here's our first Bitcoin right here. So let's see what Bitcoin Cash. Once you it looks like once you start seeing Bitcoin Cash, that says something. So right here we have a Bitcoin Cash. So you look at the data and look and see what it looks like. See right here, move in average, momentum was positive, the ROCP was positive, same thing here with the Ethereum and ROCP. What I have noticed is that when <clears throat> Bitcoin moves up or any of the Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, they move, they move all together. So here we can see here with the Bitcoin Cash entry, here's the ATR levels. But what I'm really looking for is the momentum. You see right here, out of again six, half, is it half? One, two, three, four. Half of them are negative. ROCP, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative. Should not take that trade. Here's a light coin. Let's see what that's doing. Uh, momentum. Momentum. This one only has two out of four negative uh, momentum. ROCP. It's the same. Ethereum. So what that would tell me is that uh, those positions I just looked at would probably it's it's a, it's a, it's a fifty fifty if they'd be profitable or not. So we're seeing big, more Bitcoin Cash. What else we got here? Uh, momentum, this is for what? Ethereum. So you can see what was trading. Oh, ah, here's the big one. Bitcoin. Now, <clears throat> you can see how strong it is. Momentum, half a percent. So over a certain period of time, it moved 0.589%. That's a, that's a fairly big move. So interesting to find it where Bitcoin's starting to move. Right here is another Bitcoin position, 85.37. And when these move, they move and they're in the right direction, man, you can make a boatload of money, a couple hundred bucks. So let's check out. So we have here Bitcoin. That's big, big, yeah. 
So it shouldn't really take that position. This one, two, three, four, five, six, negative. Not good. Shouldn't take those positions. But you can clearly see that the market did get fairly active last night. And one theory is, is once you start seeing your Litecoin uh, op opening up, that's a chance that things are starting to pop or will pop with Bitcoin to follow and Bitcoin Cash as well and maybe Ethereum. Like all the big ones that are moving. And it might it won't last that long. Maybe six hours, three hours. But that's all I'm seeing is uh Um, just trying to see what else there was. Okay, I'm going to see what other coins there were. Another one that's interesting uh, is either Neo. Let me see if there was a Neo. So there's a Neo, Neo. So that was a few days earlier. But uh, this is independent of uh, where it's not co integrated to the performance of, of, uh, of um, Bitcoin. So you can see here, we have three minutes of positive, but uh, that's not bad outside of these two negative. So Neo did, this is, it can be a nice one to watch. Uh, another one, see how this one does, is Chainlink. I like Chainlink because I can perform kind of nice too. Let's see how that's been doing. Uh, positive, negative, positive. This one's fairly, fairly volatile. So we have Link. Trying to think of, oh, EOS is another one as well. These are the usual ones that, so EOS, no, but NEO, yeah. Um, so those are the ones that seem to be popping here and there. Hopefully, uh, coming back to this course, this this will walk you through all the important elements to get to this point, to be able to look at data and analyze pretty precisely what you need to do as a debugging process in your, in your, uh, bought as it evolves and which market to be in as well because each market is different as I said with Binance U US versus Binance in the crypto market two, same same exchange or ownership but the two exchanges are totally different uh, hopefully I'll help you out we shall uh, talk to you later and uh, have a good day